This is the 2019 MacBook Pro 16 inches. Yes, this MacBook was released five years ago. And this was the last MacBook that used, you know, a processor, a chip that was made by Intel. You know, the MacBooks after this 2019 MacBook Pro started using the Apple owned chip, which is the M1 chip. Okay. So my video today, I'm going to be explaining and telling you if this MacBook Pro is what it is it for. If this, you know, can handle your tax this year, 2024. So all you need to do is to watch this video to the very end to get the full information. So guys, let's get started. So guys, the very first I'm going to talk about is the design. Yes. Now, holding this, you know, MacBook Pro right here on my hands, it feels very big. Why do I say so? First of all, like I said, it is 16 inch MacBook and all the MacBooks I've been using before is the, you know, 13 inch MacBook. Now, let me show you what I mean, okay? So you can see the difference between, you know, this, my very first MacBook I used, which is the MacBook Pro 2015. Can you see how it is? And yes, you can now see my daily drive MacBook over here also, right? Which is the M1, you know, 2020. This M1 is, you know, the first Apple owned chip, like I talked about at the beginning of my video. So now looking at the size of both of these three laptops, you can see that this is actually quite big and it makes it more heavier than both of them. So now this laptop uses an aluminum, you know, finishing. This is what, you know, Apple is known for finishing your laptops with, you know, aluminum feel, which is very, very sleek and still smooth when you are, you know, rubbing your hands on this MacBook. And guys, talking about rubbing your hands on this laptop, you know, most laptops, when you touch them, the natural oil of your fingertips gets stick onto the case of the laptop, which is very noticeable. However, for this MacBook Pro 2019, it doesn't leave a sign. Yes, as you can see, I'm, I've tried it, you know, different times and it is not noticeable. So this is also one feature which is also very nice about this aluminum finishing that, you know, the MacBook uses for their laptop. Now, one other thing I like about, you know, MacBooks as a whole, not just talking about the MacBook Pro 2019, is when you want to, you know, open your MacBook, you can just use one finger, you know, to open it. However, let's say you want to open a Windows laptop, an HP laptop or any other make, you have to support it with your, you know, with your other hand so that it can open properly. Okay, even though this does not matter to the features of a laptop, well, here's something that I just, you know, like when I'm handling my laptop. Now, talking about the build of this, you know, MacBook Pro 2019, you know, by the left hand side, we have this two type C port, which you can use for charging or to put in your hard drive or your adapter where you can plug in your SD card. Because guys, you know, when I'm using this laptop to edit, I have to get this adapter so I can, you know, plug it into the desktop so that I now put in my memory card after just done my camera over here. Well, unlike this, you know, MacBook Pro 2015, which I've already done a video about, you know, you can see that the, by the side, you have this, you know, memory card port, you have this HDMI port, you have the you know, normal hard drive port. I'm using this MacBook Pro 2015. I don't need to start getting an adapter to plug it in, but I need that for, you know, this MacBook Pro 2019. Later on after this video, I'm also going to com compare the 2019 MacBook Pro and the 2015 MacBook Pro to tell you which I should be going for in the year in 2024. So you can also make your choice depending on why you want a MacBook. Okay. So moving on to the right hand side of this, you know, MacBook Pro 2019, we also have two type C, you know, ports and one 3.5 mm jack for your headphone. Yes. Okay. Now, one thing I love about this MacBook Pro 2019 16 inch is the port. Regardless of the fact that it doesn't have specific ports to put in your maybe your SD card, to put in your hard drive directly, and all. Now, I'll bring the design of this to my MacBook Pro 2020, which uses the M1. Okay. You know, this one right here has just by the right hand side only 3.5 mm headphone jack, while this has, you know, two more ports by the right hand side. So, what does it have to do with, you know, the design? Now it means you can now decide to charge, you know, your laptop without a convenience in yourself. So let's say, for example, you are putting your laptop by your right hand side. You can just quickly plug, you know, your charger by the right hand side of the laptop. And if you move it to the left hand side, you can still plug it by the left hand side of the laptop and 
you are good to go. So if it makes it easy for you and you have more ports to plug in with a lot of, you know, movie drives and other devices on this MacBook Pro. Now, off to the display, this MacBook Pro 2019 uses a 16 inch display, which makes it very huge. You know, unlike all this, MacBooks over here, which they are both just 13 inch. You can see an obvious difference in the screen size. Now, this type of screen, which is 16 inch, is going to be very favorable to those, let's say, who edit videos like me, or maybe when you are watching the videos or you are performing some tasks on your laptop and you don't have a monitor, you have a bigger screen to connect your MacBook to. This screen, this large screen, comes in hand. Yes, it's actually very nice to work on this and you are just so comfortable because you can practically see everything like you like with a mini monitor because of how large the screen size is compared to you know, other MacBooks, right? Also, not talking about the quality it gives you, you are watching movie or maybe you are editing videos. This uses a retina display, which makes the quality very fantastic. And it also has you know 500 nits of brightness, which means that you can increase the brightness. So let's say for example, you're working in a in a very bright environment. So you can just increase the brightness of this your MacBook Pro and you can work wherever you are. Now for the keyboard and the keypad. Now this MacBook Pro 2019 uses the Apple signature backlit keyboard yes you know it makes it easy for you to type even in the dark because all keys has light behind it it also has the touch bar which helps you navigate through a lot of things on your macbook so for example you can use it to you know increase the brightness of your macbook or to reduce it to pause and play music to increase and reduce your audio a lot more on this you know touch bar it also has a fingerprint sensor which almost all latest laptop in the market today has so you could just you know unlock your MacBook with just a fingerprint, and this fingerprint also serves as the power button. Now talking about the trackpad, you can see how big the trackpad is compared to the MacBook Pro of 2015 and also the M1 2020. You know this gives you more room when you're making use of it. Like you have more room now to the webcam and audio. So this MacBook Pro uses you know 720 HD FaceTime camera. Okay, however, guys, when I was checking out this FaceTime camera, I really don't like how it is. I don't really like the quality, it's quite poor. I want you to tell me in the comment section, you know, what you think of the quality. Okay, now by both sides of this MacBook Pro, you have this wide stereo speaker, which is quite loud when you're watching a movie or you're editing a video or anything that has to do with audio, and it brings out a very nice sound quality. When you are working on it now for the performance you know this is what most people look out for before getting you know a macbook or a laptop in general okay now this mac pro 2019 is built with 2.4 gigahertz 8 core intel core i9 remember i said that this was the last macbook pro that used the intel chip you know following the next one we had the m1 the m2 m3 m4 which are all apple owned okay so now talking about what can this you know intel core i9 do when you're working on it okay so let's say for example i am handling my data tax this macbook pro can handle it and you're watching movie you are you know let's say going on documents because i'm a content writer i'm writing documents for my client and all you know i'm surfing through the net this handles it perfectly now when it comes to editing video because you know editing video is one of the hardest tasks from a laptop if i'm not mistaken right if i'm editing a 1080p video it works, yes. With my Premiere Pro and my CapCut, it goes through smoothly. But now when it comes to editing a 4K video, like let's say after shooting on my camera right now and I bring it here to edit, go to my CapCut my Premiere Pro, you know, initially it starts going fine. But before you know it, the laptop starts getting hot and it starts lagging. And you can even hear the fan, you know, increasing to try to cool down the CPU, which is already getting hot because of the heavy task you are performing on this Mac Pro. So, when it comes to performing heavy tasks, I would not recommend this MacBook for you. You know, this is something that my M1 2020 can handle perfectly well without even, you know, stress. I edit all my videos on this one recently, okay? But this, my 2019 MacBook Pro, just cannot really handle much of that heavy performance. Now, to the battery life. Okay, so according to Apple, they said this amount can last for 11 hours once fully charged. However, the truth here is, you know, it does not last 11 hours okay first of all it's been a very long time you know this macbook came out 
So that's one of the reasons why it cannot last 11 hours, no matter what you're doing. And the second thing is going to determine, you know, how long this batch is going to last is what you're doing. If you're watching movies, you're doing this and that, you're surfing through the net, you know, and all, this can stay quite long. But when you're now editing videos on Premiere Pro, CapCut, Filmora, you know, and the rest of them, guys, this tends to die a lot faster. Now, for the software updates, few weeks from now, you know, the latest macOS is going to be released to the market and everyone can get it. But you're wondering, can this MacBook Pro Titan also have this latest macOS? Then this is your answer as you can see on screen. These are the MacBooks that's going to be getting all these macOS updates. Okay, so this is going to be getting it. Now, the price. So most people usually go for a pre-owned laptop and older version of the laptop because of the price so this one is actually quite affordable well it all depends on you know where you're watching this video from because let's say if you're from nigeria this macbook may cost around 700k you know 800 600k there about depending on where you meet dollar at because you know in nigeria or every other african countries or some other part of the world where you have to convert you know from dollar to your your own national currency you know, so the rise of dollar means the rise of the price of goods in the market and the reduction of dollar means reduction of the price of goods in the market. But the point I'm making this video, the price of dollar is around 1600 So I don't know how much it is. So what I need to do is to ask the vendor so that you can find out how much it is. And guys, one thing you should know about getting a used laptop is you need to know if it is an original MacBook. Yes, you need to find out if it's an original MacBook. So I'm going to drop it on that video because I have to find out if the MacBook we are getting is an original one. Okay, so now for my final verdict, should I get this in a MacBook Pro 2019 16 inch in the year 2024? Well, my answer is yes and no. So like I said in the performance, it all depends on you, right? Do you want a MacBook that can handle heavy task? If that's what you want in a MacBook, then I'm not really sure you should be going for this because why I you know initially it's going to be going smooth for you along the way, it is going to get you frustrated. Okay, so but if you want to just get a MacBook to maybe watch what you just had this today task, then this is the MacBook for you. Or maybe this may not be the MacBook for you. Maybe this 2015 MacBook may be the one for you, or this 2020 MacBook may be the one for you. So just watch this other videos so that you too can find out you know which one you're going to choose between these three. And don't worry, on my next video, I'm also going to be comparing the 2019 the MacBook Pro, you know, 16 inch with, you know, the 2015 MacBook Pro 13 inch. And I'll be explaining which I should get for the purpose of, you know, what you need the MacBook for, right? I want to be comparing both laptops. I'm also going to compare this is my M1 2020. Yes, this is my M1 2020 and this, you know, MacBook Pro 2019. Okay, so guys, I'll be seeing you in my next video as I explain and explore everything you need to know about this old MacBook. From the latest update to compare, you know, other MacBooks together, I also talk about, you know, iPhones, all iPhones commercially here. So you will not want to miss them out. So guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and turn on the bell screen icon so that when I create these videos, you'll be the first to get notified. Okay? So I will see you guys in my next video.